10,000 years ago, in ancient Egypt, the lands were ruled over by an amazing king. The king's name was Osiris. Under his rule, everybody was happy. Nobody got sick. There was plenty of food. It was a fantastic time to be in Egypt. However, Osiris had a brother named Seth. Seth was the most strongest of all the gods and was incredibly jealous of his brother Osiris. He was so jealous because Seth wanted to be king himself. So one night when Osiris was sleeping, Seth crept into his palace, climbed up the walls of the tower and snuck into Osiris' bedroom. He walked over to the bed where Osiris was sleeping and brought out a rope. Using this rope, he measured Osiris' body all over. He measured his legs, his chest, his arms, his hands, his fingers, his toes, his beard, his face, his shoulders, his ears, his nose. He measured everything and crept out of the room and Osiris had no idea what happened. A few days later, Seth goes to all the hundreds and thousands of gods and goddesses of Egypt, and he says, My fellow deities, as amazing and powerful gods and goddesses as we are, and the fantastic work that we do in Egypt, I am going to throw us a spectacular party in our own honour. So a few days later, all the gods and goddesses go to Seth's palace, and it is the biggest, most magnificent party you have ever seen. There is food and music, dancing and drink. The night is fantastic. As the evening wears on, Seth stands up and claims to the gods, I have a fantastic prize for you, a game, a competition. And he brings out a solid gold coffin covered in the finest jewels of all Egypt. The gods and goddesses see this and they start drooling. They want it that badly. Seth says, you can win this on one condition. You must lie down inside the coffin and fit perfectly. So one by one, the gods and goddesses line up and try and get inside the coffin. Some are too big, won't fit. Some are too small, too much room left over. Till finally, Osiris stands up and claims, as king of all the gods, as ruler of all the lands and the people, I shall win this prize. And he walks over and lies down inside the coffin and fits perfectly. Quick as a flash, Seth runs over, slams the lid on the coffin and hammers it shut using his bare hands. He picks the coffin up and throws it out of the palace window and it goes flying through the sky and plop lands in the river Nile. Upon seeing this, Isis, queen of all the gods and goddesses, wife of Osiris, screams, Seth, you monster, what have you done? Mwahaha, I shall now become the king. And with a burst of magic light and a puff of smoke, Isis turns into a bird and she flies out of the palace window, chasing after the coffin with her husband inside it. She flies and flies for days and days until finally she sees the coffin of her husband nestled amongst the banks of the River Nile. She flies down, poof, turns back into a human. She opens the lid of the coffin and inside it she finds the body of her husband. Osiris has died. Isis is the queen of magic and healing and she thinks, okay, I know, I'm really tired. I'm going to get some sleep and in the morning I'm going to summon Anubis, the god of death. And together we shall bring my husband back to life. So she goes to sleep. While she's sleeping, Seth hears of this plan. He jumps into a golden chariot and races down the banks of the River Nile to try and find her. Finally, he finds her sleeping next to the body of her husband. He jumps off his chariot, gets an axe out and chops Osiris into 14 pieces. And then he scatters all of the body parts all over Egypt, all the different corners. Isis wakes up. There's blood everywhere. Seth, you demon, what have you done? Why, why are you doing this? Mwahaha, no one should defeat me now. I will become the king of Egypt for all eternity. 
After seeing her husband get scattered to all the different parts of Egypt, Isis is beside herself with grief and sadness. So she thinks, okay, who can help me? Who can help me in my darkest hour, my time of need? I know, my sister Nephthys. So the two of them turn into birds and spend the next 10 days flying all around Egypt, trying to find every single part of Osiris's body. After 10 days of searching, they find all but one of them. They can't find <coughs> his leg. So they put all the body parts they can find together, and Isis, being the queen of healing and magic, she gets a big lump of clay from the River Nile, shapes it into a perfect version, a copy of Osiris's leg, and attaches it to him. She uses her magic, and it becomes his real missing leg. Now, without wasting any time, the two goddesses summon Anubis, the god of death. He comes bursting out of the desert sands. Why have you summoned me, goddesses? And they tell him the whole story. Without wasting any time, Anubis mummifies Osiris. And Osiris becomes the first person ever to be mummified. He cannot be brought back to life to live amongst the normal people. But he is instead sent down to the afterlife to be the gatekeeper to the Egyptian version of heaven. He is the god of the underworld now. Now this has happened, Seth can take over and become the king. He builds a grand new palace and sits upon his throne. But during this time, everything goes wrong for Egypt. The crops stop growing, there is not enough food. The water in the river becomes poisonous. People are getting sick. It's so bad, people are even stopping worshipping the gods. This is not a good time in Egypt. But there is a ray of hope. Just before Osiris got sent down to the underworld, Isis had a baby boy. That baby was named Horus. And for the next nine years, Horus and Isis lived alone in an oasis in the middle of the desert. Because in ancient Egypt, when you turn nine years old, you are considered an adult. And on his birthday, Horus decides he wants to take his throne back. It rightfully belongs to him. So he goes to the council of elder gods. And there are many, many, many of them. You have Thoth, the wisest of all the gods. Sekhmet, the lion-headed goddess of toothache and war. And many more besides those. Horus says to the gods, please let me fight my uncle. The throne is rightfully mine. Seeing as Egypt has been plunged into chaos under Seth's rule, the gods are all in favour of this. And the two gods start battling each other. They use axes, hammers, swords, shields. They throw each other into buildings. They level Egypt flat. But gods are immortal and cannot be killed. The only reason Osiris died was because inside the coffin was a spell that made him fall asleep and he drowned in the River Nile. But Seth and Horus, their battle lasted for 80 years with no breaks, no sleeping, constant battling. Till finally, after 80 years, the Council of Elder Gods steps in and says, right, that's enough lads, break it up. You must settle this in a competition. Seth, as the current king, you decide what the competition will be. So Seth thinks to himself, hmm, I know. We will transform ourselves into golden hippos. We will go underwater and hold our breaths for 30 days. Whoever can do this will be declared the king of all Egypt. Horus, of course, agrees to this. So the two of them turn themselves into golden hippos and walk underneath the river Nile and wait at the bottom. On about day 14, an unnamed goddess sails up and throws a spear into Horus's chest. He bursts out of the water. Ah, cheats, lies, shenanigans. I demand a new competition. So the competition, of course, is cancelled. Knowing that Horus got cheated out of this, the gods turn to him and say, OK, Horus, you pick the next competition. Without missing a beat, Horus thinks, OK, we are going to have a boat race. 
but not in the ordinary boat race. These boats will be made of solid stone. So the two gods go off and build their boats. Finally, when race day comes, all the thousands of gods line the banks of the River Nile. Any people who are still alive in Egypt, they are there to watch this race as well, because whoever wins will become their next true king. Seth picks up his boat and places it into the River Nile, and plop, it sinks straight to the bottom. He is out of the race. Horus, he picks his boat up, places it on the river, and it floats. He stands on top of it and paddles it down the River Nile and wins the race. He is declared the true king of all Egypt. The people and the gods on the riverbanks cheer with joy and happiness. Seth is now banished to the desert, where he becomes the god of thunder, lightning and chaos. But there's a reason why Horus won. He cheated. He built his boat out of wood and paper, but painted it to look like stone. The Council of Elder Gods knew this, but because Seth was doing such a terrible job as king, they let Horus get away with it. Mm -hmm.